In the opening scene of the movie, Kate opens her door and is happy to see a box waiting for her. She carries the box into the house excitedly and opens it up. She takes out one of the books inside and looks at it with pride, saying it's best-selling entertainment, and not porn. Kate goes to Tire Depot, a mechanic workshop, every day to look around, as she's making progress in her writing. One day, Betty the baker engages her in a conversation. Betty says that she looks familiar, and Kate tells her she's a writer, under the pen name Mercedes Lee Love Letter. Betty asks what kind of books she writes, giving examples, and even tries to look at her present work, but Kate is reluctant, and says she doesn't allow anyone to see her work in progress. Betty thinks her car must be in bad shape, since she comes here every day, so Kate lies that she's not really a writer, and is actually here with corporate to check on them. She tells Betty to be quiet about it, and Betty, taking her seriously, promises. The next day, Kate tries to get her friend Dean's car, so that she won't blow her cover. Dean comments that she's desperate, but she says it doesn't matter, since she's gotten her writing mojo back. Dean suggests that she follow the back entrance, instead of borrowing every neighbor's car. She seizes on the idea and runs off as he calls after her, exasperated. This time Kate passes through the back door of Tire Depot to the Comfort Center. She makes a cup of coffee, finds a place, and starts her work. Meanwhile, at the back, a mechanic is working. After a while, he rests for a fake smoke using licorice. As Kate is leaving, she bumps into the mechanic and falls to the ground. Worried about her computer, she checks if it's okay. And the man is left amused. He asks if she's hurt and helps her up. Kate finally takes a good look at him, and is left dumbfounded by his handsomeness. Still dazed, Kate asks him if he works at Tire Depot and he confirms that he's a mechanic. He asks if she came for a service, and she lies that she did. He asks if she's an employee, since she used the back door, and she quickly says she came out for a smoke. Kate points out that she saw him fake smoking, when he asks to join her. He explains that he quit smoking three months ago. She comments on his muscles, and the pair flirt for a while. As Kate is entering her house later, Lindsay, her friend, sneaks up behind her, scaring her. Lindsay asks where she was, and Kate lies that she was in the library. Lindsay quickly finds out that she went to Tire Depot, though, since she smells like coffee and rubber, and warns her that they may call the cops on her. Kate asks if they'll arrest her for stealing cookies and coffee, but Lindsay reminds her that she could be arrested for loitering, making Kate a little bit worried. Kate tells Lindsay that she found a backdoor and that she's no longer borrowing cars. She says that the Tire Depot is where she finds her words, and that she can't leave until she's done. Lindsay points out that Kate is only doing all this because of her ex, who is still living with her, but Kate retorts that he is out for the summer, and that she isn't going to budge when he comes back. Kate gasps when she sees letters from Tire Depot and panics, realizing that she's been caught. She is asked to pay $180 for the cookies, coffee, and even danishes. This is when she realizes that she has been pumped by Dean, because she never had any danishes. They go to Dean's house, and as Dean opens the door, Kate punches him for sending the fake invoice. Dean reminds her that he tried to invite her to check out his co-working space, but she brushes it off, saying that the people there are not her vibe. Tire Depot is her vibe, and she will fight to keep it. As she talks more, Lindsay and Dean can't believe she won a bestseller. The next day at Tire Depot, Kate is busy working on her book when a pizza delivery guy comes in, looking for a Mercedes Lee love letter. Kate is flustered as she accepts the delivery. Realizing it's a prank by Hannah, her friend, she texts her in frustration, and Hannah laughs at her. The mechanic from the day before sees Kate at the comfort center and engages her in a conversation. He points out that she is back, and she lies immediately once again. The conversation deepens when they talk about cars. He asks for her name, and she introduces herself as Mercedes. He introduces himself as Miles Hudson. He asks again why she's there, not believing her story, and she bribes him with some leftover pizza, which only buys her some time. In the next scene, Miles and his friend Sam are at a bar, and Miles asks if he's ever noticed Kate, who's been at the depot for two days in a row, but Sam hasn't. Sam accuses her of siphoning Wi-Fi, but Miles assures him that she is not a mooch, but rather just desperate. Sam accuses Miles of always falling for desperate girls and trying to save them, bringing up Miles's ex Jocelyn as an example, but Miles simply walks away, unwilling to discuss it. In the next scene, Miles is working on a car. He sees a red-headed lady, but he is disappointed when it isn't Kate. A moment later, Miles sees Kate making a cup of coffee. He calls out to her, but when she turns to see him, she faints. Upon finding out she hasn't eaten anything, he offers to buy her a pizza. Seems like there might be some truth to Sam's theory after all. Outside the shop, he watches as she sucks her fingers after eating. Noticing his stare, she tells him sternly that there is nothing sexy about it, and he chuckles. She picks up a beer but Miles doesn't allow it, telling her to drink water first, and she complies. After handing her the beer, Miles asks what she does every day, assuring her that it's a safe place. She confesses the truth, but doesn't tell him what she is writing, feeling like it would weird people out. Miles assures her that he won't judge, promising that he'll marry her if it's the next Game of Thrones, and she jokingly thanks him for the proposal. They get to know more about each other, mentioning past relationships, but not dwelling on them, and talking about their hobbies. There's definitely a growing spark between them. 
The next day, Kate drools over Miles' muscles as he works. She gets a new idea for her writing, mechanic romance, and jots it down. The next day, Kate and Miles spot each other, but just go their separate ways. When they meet in the comfort center, she asks what he's doing for the weekend, and he mentions that he's going camping with his friend. He asks about hers, but she'll just be writing. As Miles is leaving, he subconsciously kisses Kate on her cheek. He apologizes for his rudeness, unable to believe he just did that, but Kate blushes, not minding the gesture one bit. At a bar, Sam advises Miles to sleep with Kate, but Miles doesn't agree. It would be awkward, because he will continue to see her at the comfort center afterwards, and he doesn't want to ruin things. Sam and Miles spot Kate, Lindsay, and Dean, coincidentally in the same bar. Dean is kissing Kate on the cheek, and Sam teases Miles, as he doesn't seem to like it. They watch as Kate comes over to them, and Sam gets up from his seat, giving Kate his spot. As they drink, Kate asks why Miles hasn't asked her out again, and he admits that Tire Depot is safer. So Kate helps Miles look for a one-night stand. As they keep looking, Miles slyly asks about Dean, and is relieved to hear that he and Kate are not romantically involved. While searching for Miles's hookup, Kate decides that she misses the heat of a man during sex. Miles is intrigued by her words and discovers that she writes erotica. Kate tells Miles that she didn't want him to know, afraid it'll change the way he looks at her, and make him think she is a sex freak, or that he'll be embarrassed by what she does. It was the reason her ex broke up with her. What she writes is not exactly easy to tell your grandma about, she claims, but Miles laughs that he'll happily tell his grandma. To prove his point, he takes her outside the bar to call his family. He calls his sister, and she agrees that their grandma would definitely be into Kate's writing. Miles notices the change in Kate's expression after his little stunt, and when he asks what happened, she rushes into his arms, kissing him passionately. Miles doesn't want to continue, though. He likes her, but he is not in the position to like anybody at the moment. Kate is flustered and ashamed of being rejected, and walks out, claiming he shouldn't have flirted with her. The next day, Lindsay visits Kate. She smells the tire-scented candle and takes it away from a stubborn Kate. Dean arrives and comments on Kate's addiction to Tire Depot. Kate's torn, still embarrassed by what happened the previous night, but decides to return to the mechanic shop after her friends encourage her. After a while, Miles seats himself in front of Kate and asks her about her book. Miles mentions that his sister asked for her full author's name, and Kate tells him, even though she feels it's ridiculous. After a little chat to clear the air, they agree to be friends, and Kate asks him to help her with some research. Miles takes Kate on a ride with his motorcycle. Their destination is a beautiful clearing on a hill. They talk about Miles' ex, and how she cheated on him with different guys, meandering into a discussion about past relationships. Kate believes that if they didn't go through all that, they wouldn't be where they are. They are about to kiss when a motorcycle's engine disrupts them. Soon enough, Kate finishes her book, proudly showing Miles the results and inviting him to a party to celebrate. On the day, Kate reminds her friends to call her Mercedes. Dean picks Kate up just as Miles and Sam arrive, and Miles isn't happy with what he sees. Kate hugs him when they enter. Alone, Miles asks Kate if they can go somewhere private. He sees a man's shoe and she tells him she has a roommate. She lies that her roommate is gay, and that he's out for the summer. Of course, we should remember that it's actually her ex-boyfriend. Not able to withstand each other, they draw close, sucking every breath from each other as they engage in a passionately aggressive kiss. Their makeout session becomes heated as they begin to undress each other, and they give in to their connection and make love. The next morning, Miles meets Kate making pancakes in the kitchen. He hugs her from behind, as though they'd been lovers for years. At the dining table, as they're eating, they agree to make their relationship casual and become friends with benefits. Neither of them is ready for a real relationship, but they can't seem to keep their hands off each other, so this feels like a good arrangement for them both. Kate asks Miles to help with her book again, as she wants to write from a male point of view. In the next scene, Kate is on the phone with Hannah, explaining the entire situation, and confessing that she likes Miles, but doesn't know how to progress to a real relationship with him. Hannah suggests Kate go camping with Miles using her book as an excuse. In the coffee shop, Kate places her order, and as she waits for her order, she receives a message from Miles. Their sexting reminds Kate of all their escapades during the week, and she smiles at her phone. Kate is startled when she feels Dean behind her. Dean asks about Miles and Kate tells him not to worry, since they're just fooling around. Dean is not happy with Kate and Miles' relationship, and he points out that Miles rejected Kate once already, and that Miles is a mechanic. Angry, she reminds him that he's a high school dropout. She does not want to judge her friends, and Miles has been more encouraging about her job than Dean himself. Kate claims that if Dean continues to behave the way he is right now, she does not see how they can stay friends. This makes Dean come clean. He tells Kate that he likes her, and that he has liked her for years. Unfortunately, Kate doesn't feel the same way about him, so after an awkward moment, she departs, leaving Dean despondent. In the next scene, Kate and Miles are in the woods camping. Inside their camping tent, they arrange their things and flirt with each other. Miles and Kate are by the river, fishing and enjoying the scenery. Kate asks about his ex, and Miles says he no longer talks with her. 
He also says that she was a bit of a gold digger, always pushing him to make more money. As they are talking, Kate's fishing hook moves, and Miles helps her out. But she realizes that it's not a fish, instead she just caught a bicycle tire. Later, they are sitting by the fire, drinking beer and enjoying nature. Suddenly, Kate asks truth or dare, and Miles picks truth. Kate asks if he has ever gotten horny at Tire Depot. He denies it initially, then admits that he did once, making Kate laugh. Kate picks Dare, and Miles dares her to skinny dip in the lake. She asks Miles to join her, knowing where it will lead. At the lake, they both undress and enter the river. Not long after, it begins to rain, and they rush back to the tent. Stinked, they kiss and fall into each other's arms. The next morning, Kate wakes up alone in the tent, but squeals in happiness. Miles is outside making breakfast. While eating, Miles proposes that they leave early because of the muddy mess created by the rain. Miles drops Kate at her place, where they bid each other goodbye. Kate sees Dean waiting in front of her house. She's skeptical at first because of their last encounter, but Dean apologizes for his jealousy, and Kate accepts his apology. They go into the house. Dean asks if she stayed the night at Miles's place. He assures her that it's an honest question. Kate tells him that they went camping for book research, and Dean acknowledges the fact that Miles inspires Kate. Kate also apologizes for everything, admitting that she never realized he had feelings for her. Dean, only wanting the best for Kate, advises her to come clean and tell Miles about her feelings, her real name, and also that she's still living with her ex. The longer she waits, the harder it will get, and if Miles really loves her, he will forgive her. At Tire Depot, Sam is attending to some angry customers, one of whom is a rude man. Miles gets angry and Sam tries to calm him down. The two male customers are asking to see the manager. Sam tells Miles to chill and go get his uncle, but the other customer keeps running his mouth. In the back, Miles is trying his best to calm down when Kate walks in. Kate mentions that he looks angry. It seems her presence calms him down, though, as he finally starts to relax. She asks if going to his house will cheer him up, and he smiles at the thought, and they kiss. At Miles's place, Miles shows her his grandfather's car. He tells her that his grandfather passed away two years ago, and that he made a promise that he would get his car up and running again. Miles says his grandfather would have loved her, because she's a real person. He says he loves her name. Feeling guilty, Kate is about to tell him her real name, but he interrupts her with a hot kiss, and she kisses him back. He says he just wants her, and classic cars, and nothing more, and they make out in Miles's grandfather's car. Ten days later, Kate has not spoken to Miles since their intimacy in the classic car, and Miles is worried, as she hasn't replied to his texts. Seeing his texts, Kate groans on her couch. She's feeling terrible about her lies and doesn't know what to do. Not long after, her ex-boyfriend Dristan is back, and Kate is not happy with it. To make matters worse, Dristan is calling her, honey. At Miles's place, Sam is talking to Miles, but Miles does not seem to be paying attention. Sam tells him about the great opportunity that his uncle has for them. Miles does not look enthusiastic, though, as he's worried about Kate. Sam is derisive about the situation, flaring Miles' temper. Sighing, Sam backs down, but begs Miles to think clearly about the opportunity. With things a little clearer, Sam suggests they should go celebrate, and Miles agrees. At the bar, Kate tells Lindsay that Tristan is back, and she is shocked. She informs Lindsay that she told him that his stuff is in storage, and that she's changing the locks. She also says she'll pay him the deposit, and that she is not moving out. Lindsay is happy that Kate has finally gotten rid of her ex, and Kate says that all she has to do is to tell Miles her real name. She mentions that she has not spoken to Miles for days because of the Dristan drama, and that she wants to clear everything up before she gets back to him. She wants a real-life romance, and not just one in fiction. Lindsay leaves to pee and get refills, and Dristan immediately shows up and takes her spot, to Kate's annoyance. Miles and Sam enter the same bar, and Miles sees Lindsay. He tells her he is there with his friends, and she slips up, saying she's with Kate. Confused, Miles asks who Kate is, and Lindsay's not able to answer the question. He doesn't dwell on it as he spots Kate and Dristan together. He walks over to confront them and overhears Dristan calling Kate a bitch. Vexed, Miles stands up for her. He recognizes him as the customer who was getting on his nerves at Tire Depot the other day, and asks Kate if she knows him, calling her Mercedes. Laughing, Dristan tells Miles that Kate's name is not Mercedes, and Miles is confused. Kate tries to explain that she was going to tell him. Dristan also mentions that he lives with Kate, and Miles gets angry, grabbing Dristan by the collar. Dristan runs his mouth, telling Miles everything, and Miles punches him before leaving the bar angrily. Kate follows Miles outside, trying to explain the whole situation, but Miles isn't willing to hear her out. However, Kate insists on explaining herself. Angry she's been lying to him, Miles asks her if she would have told him after he fell for her. She apologizes to him, explaining that she got carried away and that she likes him so much she couldn't figure out how to tell him, but he feels like a fool. He can't trust her anymore, he is out. He tells her it's officially the end of their story. Two weeks later, Dean, Kate, and Lindsay are hanging out at Dean's house, drinking. Kate miserably says that Miles has not spoken to her since the day of the incident, 
The three of them plan to make a grand gesture with Kate's book, hoping to prove to Miles how she feels about him. The trio drive out to an old house, Lindsay and Dean encouraging Kate as she heads inside. Miles is in his room sleeping when his phone buzzes. It's Meg, his sister. She tells him his mum is worried about him. Miles calls her and explains that he was seeing Kate, but now it is over. Meg listens to the story and advises him not to think every girl that messes up is like his ex. After the call, Miles realizes that he is still in love with Kate. Kate enters Tire Depot holding something in her hands, working up her courage. She sees Sam. She hands over the object in her hands, the last part needed for Miles needs to get his grandpa's truck running, and asks him to hand it to Miles, without telling him it is from Kate. Sam is shocked, since the part is expensive. As Kate is about to leave, Sam calls her back and tells her that Miles paid his uncle every week she was at Tire Depot, and she's flabbergasted by the revelation. This whole time, they knew, and it was Miles keeping her there. He tells her that Miles made a deal with his uncle to look the other way anytime Kate came. She knows that she has to face him now, she can't just leave things like this. Holding the object in her hands, she heads to the back and confronts Miles. Surprised, he asks her where she got it, and she tells him it is a long story that involves a rattlesnake. She apologizes for lying and explains that she is Kate Smith from Longmont, Colorado. She promises him that she loves him, and he admits that he loves her too. Despite everything, he hasn't been able to get over her, and he's willing to forgive her and try again. He comes closer, she jumps into his arms, and they kiss passionately. All the other mechanics in the shop clap, happy for Miles. Some time later, in her house, Kate is unboxing her new book, The Mechanic. She picks a book up and looks at it with excitement. At his garage, Miles is done with his grandfather's car. He goes to the table, where he sees a book left for him. Opening it, he reads the note which says, To Miles, thanks for the dirty talk. Love, Kate. From behind, Kate asks if he likes it, and looking back at her, he says he loves it. She jumps into his arms, and they kiss. 